I have Are you calling um, the media. We agreed yeah. to do an interview. Yeah, but I, I, can you just stop following me? I have a question. I'm allowed to yeah, walk right. away from my face before I slap you. I just had a couple other questions yeah. for you. Have you heard of Jonathan Yaniv? In the last few months, he's actually gone by the name Jessica. Yaniv, a self-described trans woman, has been all over the news and social media for his outrageous complaints against over 15 salons and estheticians for refusing to wax his male genitals. Yaniv had a gag order placed on these cases. With this publication ban, the BC Human Rights Tribunal aided and abetted Yaniv's ploy to shield himself from criticism and to prevent others in the salon business from being warned ahead of time about his habits of filing human rights complaints. But when the publication ban was lifted in July and his name was out in the public, a tsunami of his creepy past came out. The Rebel is the first to bring you an in-depth, on-camera investigation into Yaniv's activities. For instance, I spoke to a young girl who had uncomfortable and inappropriate conversations with Yaniv when she was only 14 years old. I spoke to an esthetician who was forced to leave the salon industry after her dealings with Yaniv. I also spoke to a member of the trans community about concerns and issues being raised by this story. And finally, I met with Yaniv himself in a confrontation you won't want to miss. I discovered a bully, a faker and abuser of the system. One who even threatened to have the rebel charged with harassment just for sending him a polite email. Watch as we pull back the curtain, remove the makeup, and reveal the ugly truth. The story of Yaniv's campaign against female estheticians was picked up by media all around the world. But how much of it was true? Were these reports leaving anything out? So I decided to investigate all sides of the story firsthand. That's what we do at Rebel. I flew over from Toronto to Vancouver to not only reach out to the people he has targeted, but to hear from Yaniv himself. I had pre-arranged an interview with Yaniv before an event that he was attending in downtown Vancouver. This was an event to end homophobic laws across the globe. He came across as friendly and I even had a quick positive interaction with his mother. And I was friendly right back. I wanted to get a feel for the innocent Yaniv that he puts out in public. Some people may say that you're using your transgender identity to get away with things that you wouldn't be able to get away with as a man. Uh, what do you have to say to that? I think that's absolutely disgusting why anyone would even would even say that. You know, like my, my strong belief is, you know, transgender women are women. And, you know, me being trans doesn't really change anything in this whole, this whole situation. You know, this could happen to you as well. Why is it a human right, rights case in your situation and not for the women that are refusing service, either not comfortable for religious reasons or personal reasons or are not trained in dealing with male genitals? You know, basically, um, it, it's a human right because, you know, this is the gender affirming care service. And it's it basically, the, the way I put it is, you're refusing access. Um, you're refusing access to a service. Like I was just at Pacific Center Mall, and I went to New York Fries, and this is going to be on my next human rights complaint. But I asked for some some fries, and they literally said, "Not for you, sir. You're uh, you're transgender." To put it like that. And like, Sorry, who said that? New York Fries. Here in Vancouver. Here, here in Vancouver, yes, here in Vancouver. So, you know, I deal with discrimination on a day-to-day -day basis. It sucks. Um, and I really do believe it's a human right because everyone, you and I, are entitled to receive services that are available to the public. So, I tracked down one of the former waxologists, Shayla. She refused service to Yaniv. Shayla was forced to shut down her home business after Yaniv dragged her to the BC Human Rights Tribunal. I've never, like, I've never been put in that situation, like, I've never had that brought up to me. So, I was just trying to mostly approach it the right way just because one, I'm not trained to wax male genitals, so I didn't know, like, should I be asking them if they still have male parts? Um, like, I don't want to offend this person, but that obviously didn't work. <laughs> Do you feel like you have the right to refuse a service? Absolutely, I do. I was, I've even been taught, like, if there's anybody who makes you uncomfortable, whether it be male or female, or you just feel like someone's hygiene, like, is not something you're comfortable with or like even if a girl comes in and she's like 
has her period and you're uncomfortable with it, you've got the right to be like, hey, so like come back at another time or just like, I don't feel like just because we're in this industry that we should be forced to do things that we're not comfortable with. I also talked about the Yaniv case with Jen Smith, a transgender public speaker and author. Jen's warnings that transgender ideology pose a danger to women and children have made him a target of far left backlash. Well, as long as you've set up a tribunal like this, you're going to have to entertain um, complaints like this and you're going to have to treat every case on its merits within the framework that you've established. So even though I believe that uh, Jessica has uh, psychological issues, that doesn't matter. They have to judge the case on its own merits. If we go back 20 years ago, this wasn't uh, a debate, this wasn't a question. A woman had an absolute right to say no to being exposed to a naked male body, right? But because again, we've subscribed to this lie, now it's become complicated. My solution, again, is getting us back to physical reality, and that will return the right to biological females to say, look, I don't want to be exposed to naked male bodies, right? Subscribing to this illusion where we you know, want to force these women to subscribe to something that they don't believe in is Orwellian. Our society is in serious trouble right now. Everybody has rights. So if, let's say we abolish the uh, BC Human Rights Code and just went with the, the Charter of Rights uh, at the uh, national level, right? If we abolished that, transgender people would still have rights, the same rights that everybody else has. Uh, the only right to, that they wouldn't have anymore would be to force other people to deny reality. Okay, so my solution would be to abolish the BC Human Rights Tribunal and to, um, uh, well, get back to reality. A transgender person wanting salon services is one thing, but Yaniv has a history of other lawsuits and inappropriate behavior. For instance, we started to hear reports that Yaniv had tried to set up a topless pool party for underage kids. Was this true? If so, what was he thinking? LGBTQ youth, I can, or the, the parents of LGBTQ youth that are supportive, I think they'll be totally fine with the idea. The people that are not LGBTQ, that's where I think they don't quite understand that it's not easy for, um, it's not easy at all for an FTM or an MTF to go into a pool and, you know, pretty much, almost expose their bodies. And it's like, you know, when you have, when, when you're out in public, you're not going around wearing a, wearing a super tight bikini, for example. You're, you're out there being yourself, you're covered up, you know, like myself, for example, you know, they, they, they refer to this as passing as such. Like, I think I pass quite a bit, but um, it's hard. And people don't understand that, you know, just for someone that's FTM, going into, um, Going into a pool can be a pretty traumatizing experience for them. So essentially, when you ha when you have an event that makes more pe makes these youth comfortable, it just let them open up more and more and more until they're comfortable and actually going out and being themselves. A lot of people hearing about something like this immediately think that this sounds like predatory behavior. Maybe surprisingly, Jen Smith doesn't see it that way. I mean, Jessica has been sort of characterized as a predator. My personal opinion is that if you want to classify Jessica something, I mean, again, we would roll back to the psychological issues, right? So if you want to classify Jessica something, it's more in the lines of a creep, okay? Uh, I don't think Jessica is actually physically dangerous, but um, unless you want to consider, you know, Jessica getting naked in a women's change room as being dangerous, well then, maybe. <laughs> but I don't think Jessica would actually harm anybody, at least I don't get that impression from, from Jessica. At one point, Jonathan gained the trust of young girls by claiming to be the manager of a teen pop group, Cimarelli, by presenting this photo. Yaniv even messaged young girls directly from the Cimarelli's Facebook group. Speaking with me, Yaniv denied sending any of the messages that we have seen come out in his name. And so the messages that we've seen online that have come up between you and Jessica Rumpel and a few other girls, um, very detailed about pads and tampons and women's changing rooms. They're all fake. Everything in one of those messages has been fake. And so if you think they're fake, who's, who's, uh, who's that's, framing you? That's exactly what I've been trying to figure, <laughs> figure out what the hell is going on here. Exactly. But it must be hard to keep a lie going because he stumbled when he debated transgender YouTube personality Blair White and admitted he did send some of those messages. 
And I did work for quite a popular girl band that is very, very popular on YouTube that involves six singing sisters. Pretty obvious now, but um, but when I handled their social media, basically what I wanted to do is relief. There was a lot of tr drama and a lot of tension that was building, especially in those early years. So what I did, I reached out on my Twitter and I said, hey, how old are you? To try and create almost like a fan base in a sense and, and pretty much allevi alleviate those tensions. Yaniv also used online chats such as ask.fm. That's where he first contacted Jessica Rumpel. Rumpel, who wasn't comfortable talking on camera, but was able to give me some insight on how Yaniv operates. Rumpel was 14 years old at the time when Jonathan started sending her inappropriate messages. Not only are these messages grossly disturbing, but listen to this creepy voice note. Come on, love the fuck. Come on, love. Come on, love some dicky. Come on, love this Come on, love some pussy. I love you too, Jess Papa. I love you. You go be good. Up in you. Up in you. Up in you. Now, Yaniv denies knowing Jessica Rumpel, let alone communicating with her. I, I never talked to a Jessica Rumpel. I don't even know who the hell this woman is. Yaniv is also alleged to have said some very racist and disgusting remarks against the Sikh and Middle Eastern community. Even an alleged audio clip of Yaniv has leaked. Have a listen for yourself. I am not kidding. This turbid fucker. Oh, they drive me crazy. They should not be allowed in Canada. I swear, these, they just piss me off. All the people that I spoke to paint a picture that the media is ignoring. A disturbing story that even Yaniv himself can't keep straight. Jen Smith explains one of the issues in the transgender community. First of all, we've been sort of predicting that the BC Human Rights Tribunal would result in this type of thing and it's just the, the way it's structured. And then when you get into looking at the transgender community in general, what you'll find, and I'll just reference a, a study that was done in the uh, American Journal of Psychology, which looked at uh, a very large number of transgender people and determined that 61% of them had DSM-listed psychological conditions in addition to gender dysphoria. And in those cases, 75% of those cases, they had determined that gender uh, identity or gender dysphoria was uh, a result of these other conditions, okay? So they like to say that I'm constantly demonizing the uh, transgender or pathologizing the uh, transgender community by pointing out these mental health issues, but they're very real and they're very serious. And Jessica Yanov, I would say, is sort of a case in point. So we know that obsessive compulsive tendencies when they look at children, for instance, the, the, the kids who are identifying as transgender tend to have these obsessive compulsive tendencies. And that's what you see in Jessica Yaniv. So Jessica Yaniv is you know, exactly what you might expect, to, or certainly not something that you wouldn't expect to see in this situation. Yaniv's human rights complaints against female salon workers have received the most publicity. But what many people don't realize is that he has brought all kinds of other nuisance lawsuits against other people was in a two-year legal battle with a man named Andrew Barron over an $11,000 contract. And he sued Dream Talks Vancouver and the Vancouver Playhouse for $25,000 for burning sage and upsetting his lungs. These waxing cases, they're not your first complaints and lawsuits. You've had some lawsuits in the past and a lot of your critics use that and say that you're a bully and doing it for attention and for money. What do you have to say to that? That's not true at all. Like I run, I run my own marketing company, and I have had to fight against clients that don't pay. And I think, I think anyone that runs the business and has a client that doesn't want to pay, uh, or just takes off with twelve, twenty thousand dollars of expenditures, um, will obviously want to go after them when they're a small single person business. He obviously prepared exactly what he'd say to me, no matter what I asked. What he wasn't prepared for was me sticking around after the event was over to ask him some more questions. When he was caught by surprise, that's when all hell broke loose. He dropped his victimhood mask and his mother lost her cool. They believe Hello. that you're using your transgender Are they identity. Can I get, um, police assistance again, please, at 970 Homer. Um, I have. Are you calling um, the police? Media. We agreed yes. to do an interview. Yeah, but I, I, 
Can you just stop following me, please? I just had a couple other questions for you. Excuse me, why why are you enabling Jessica I don't want, to I don't Do you think want it's appropriate don't, don't, to have a topless swim party with kids? You're not allowed you, to arrest me. I excuse me. Excuse me. Listen, I don't want you to get upset. I'm just asking you a question. Yeah. Mom, you will be shot. You station. You okay. will be jumped. Mom, you are sorry. harassing me. You are harassing me. I'm not harassing you. I'm just asking you a question. Okay, we see you in court. Okay, let's 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 let's